Today I'll be scoring and ranking the new Nothing Ear and EA against 19 earbuds. So the Ear is the upgraded version of the Ear 2 retailing at 149 US dollars. And the EA is a new cheaper alternative retailing at $99. Now here's my current leaderboard with the Technics AZ80 in first place. And the Nothing E2 is actually in that tied fourth spot. So quite high in the ranking already. You can also customize all this scoring with my spreadsheet link below, but I'll explain more of that later. Now this ranking is mainly earbuds over $100, although I do have the OnePlus Buds 3 in there. They're also $99, but they hold up incredibly well. They're pretty high up in that ranking. So that's definitely gonna be the main contender for the EA. But let's get into category one, comfort. And as always, fit is different for everyone. So I'll talk about my experience, but also keep it general to the actual design of the earbuds. And both the E and EA have the exact same design as the year two, which is great because they're one of the most comfortable buds out there, super compact with great ergonomics. It's a bud I can personally wear for hours with no issues, and they are gonna work better if you have smaller ears with their compact design. The only difference here is with the color of the EA, so they have a brand new yellow color and a different variation of white. The ear still comes in the same black or white color the E2 had. You also get the same three sizes of ear tips. The only difference is that they have cutouts now, which should help prevent the driver from getting dirty. So the overall score for comfort here is a nine out of 10, same as the E2. Now category two is the security of the fit. Again, I keep the scoring pretty general here, so I'm scoring both buds an 8 out of 10. I would personally score them higher for myself because when I'm weight training with these, I'm barely needing to readjust the earbuds. And they work great when running, as do most stem style earbuds, with that weight distribution holding the bud down so you don't hear too much bodyborne noise from the impact you make on the ground, as well as your own heavy breathing. And if you like using your earbuds when training, both have an IP54 dust and water resistant rating. It is nice to have that dust resistance as well, especially on the EA being a cheaper model. Even a lot of premium earbuds don't have dust resistance. All right, category three is case and battery life. And a major complaint a lot of people had about the E2 was the low earbud battery at only four hours with noise cancelling on, which is the lowest out of all the earbuds on my ranking. Six hours is about the average, and the Sony XM5s actually give you eight hours with noise cancelling on. So it's great to see that this has been improved. So you get five hours and 12 minutes on the ear, 24 hours in total with the case, and five and a half hours on the EA, 24 and a half hours with the case. Still not amazing, but considering how compact the earbuds are, that's a pretty decent improvement. Now they don't advertise the fast charge you get on the earbuds just with the case. So you can charge both cases for 10 minutes and that's gonna give you 10 hours of playback equivalent with noise canceling off. Bit of a random thing to advertise, but with the earbuds, I'll assume it's the same as the Ear 2's 10 minutes of charge, giving you one hour and 12 minutes of playback on the earbuds. They're very specific with their advertised amounts. Now the Ear case actually has an IP55 dust and water resistant rating, same as the Ear 2, but the EA only gives you an IPX2 rating, so no dust resistance, and that is better than nothing, but you basically you wanna avoid getting that case wet. Now the ear gives you wireless charging, the EA doesn't, but I think this is a good area to cut cost. I personally never use wireless charging. I just like to plug things in, I don't know. Anyway, the actual design of the ear case is the exact same as the ear 2, same size, same colors, but the EA case is a completely new design. So you get that nice yellow color, you got grooved edges and it's slightly more compact overall, but the actual thickness is the same as the ear and ear 2. So all three cases are actually ranked second in my overall thin ranking, just behind the AirPods Pro 2. So taking all this into account, I'm scoring the EA a 7.5 and the E an 8.5 since they have wireless charging and better dust and water resistance on the case. So they move up half a point from the E2 with that improved earbud and case battery life. Now category four is controls and you get the same great squeeze controls you get on the E2. So you get a single, double, triple press, long hold, as well as a press and hold, which makes adjusting volume up and down nice and easy. You can customize the controls for the left and right earbuds, but you are a bit limited. So the single press is locked to play pause. The double and triple press is only gonna be for track control or voice assistant. The long hold can be used for noise canceling control, volume or voice assistant. You can also change the noise canceling switching. So you can add noise canceling off into the mix or change that around. And with the double press and hold, you can use that for noise control, volume or voice assistant. I prefer having that set to the volume up and down because you can just double press hold and it will keep increasing or decreasing the volume. And both buds use wearing detection to automatically pause and play your music when you take one or both earbuds out of your ear. It's super responsive. It'll automatically turn noise canceling off if you take one earbud out and you can toggle it on or off in the app. So both buds get the same score of eight as the E2 hub. 
So you get great customization. The only thing to consider here is if you prefer things like swipe gesture. So the AirPods Pro 2, Google Pixel Buds Pro, Bose QC Buds, and OnePlus Buds 3 have volume up and down with their swipe gesture. So that'll allow you to control most things when using just one earbud. Where with the Nothing Ear and EA, you need to be using both earbuds to control everything. And if you want to compare all these nitty gritty details, it's in my spreadsheet link below. All right, category five is connectivity. And both buds have Bluetooth 5.3. The EA gives you LDAC and the E gives you LDAC as well as LHDC 5.0. So LDAC is going to stream at 990 kilobits per second, 24 bit, 96 kilohertz. LHDC goes to 1000 kilobits per second and up to 192 kilohertz. So twice the kilohertz. Does that mean there's actually much of a difference? In my testing, I've compared every single codec, Aptex lossless, LHDC, and they all sound about the same to me. Even going from Aptex or AAC on an iPhone to these high-res codecs, it is the smallest improvement in sound quality. So just keep that in mind. The actual tuning of the buds is what matters most. But anyway, both earbuds also have multi-point connections, so you can connect two devices to the earbuds at the same time. When you get a phone call, it'll automatically switch to your other device. But if you're playing media on your other device, you need to pause playback first before playing it on the other device. And you can use one earbud while you leave the other in the case, but it's not gonna work in mono mode. So let's say if you're using just the right earbud, it's only gonna play the right audio channel, not the left and right. And both buds here have a low latency gaming mode. So these are the results I got in my test on iOS and Android. So 400 milliseconds is okay for casual games. You do wanna get closer to 200 milliseconds for faster reaction games like shooters. So taking everything here into account, you get everything you need. Both buds are getting an 8.5. The Technics AZ80 get that higher score because they allow three devices with their multi-point connection. Now, category six is core quality. And I run through three tests here, a quiet room, a simulation loud kid setting because it's quite sporadic voices and a simulation windy city with construction. Now, first, you still can't mute your microphone using the controls when you're on a phone call but you can switch between noise cancelling and transparency with your controls. Surprisingly, a lot of earbuds don't allow you to do this. Now they are advertising a new clear voice technology, 3.0 up from 2.0. And the E2 is already one of the best microphones out of all the earbuds I've tested. And comparing all three, there are some slight differences, but it's pretty much the same. So I'm scoring all three earbuds and 8.5. But here are the samples so you can hear the differences for yourself. All right, here's a nothing ear in a quiet room. All right, here's a Nothing E2 in a quiet room. All right, here's the core quality of the Nothing EA in a quiet room. All right, now I've got some simulation loud kid noise playing. All right, here's a Nothing E with some simulation loud kid noise. All right, here's a Nothing E2 with some simulation loud kid noise. All right, here's the EA with some simulation loud kid noise. All right, now I've got some simulation city noise, construction noise, and some wind noise. All right, here's a nothing ear with some city noise, construction noise, and some simulation wind. All right, here's a nothing ear too with some city noise, construction noise, and some simulation wind. All right, here's an ear eh, with some city noise, construction noise, and some simulation wind. All right, category seven is app customization and extra features. Now, I've already covered a few aspects, so I'll touch on everything else and go in a bit more depth later. So both buds use a nothing X app, which you can get on iOS or Android. And it's just a super reliable app, super clean UI, and you get everything you need. So you mostly get the exact same features the E2 had. So the EA has a simple three band EQ with some presets. The E and E2 give you the advanced EQ with 10 bands, Q factors, frequency adjustment, by far the best EQ out of any earbud. You don't get the advanced EQ on the EA though. You also don't get the personalized sound profile. That's only on the E and the E2. The home screen also has quick access to your control customization, your noise cancelling and transparency options. And what's new here is the bass enhance feature, which I'll talk about shortly. And that settings tab on the top right is gonna have your extra features like connected devices, an ear tip fit test, and a find my buds, which will emit a beep sound from the earbuds. So I'm scoring the ear an eight out of 10, the EA a seven out of 10 because they are missing the advanced EQ and personalized sound. Now, category eight is noise canceling and how I test my noise canceling, I chuck on my soundbar and play simulation plain noise and crowd noise. So I'm getting low, middle, high, consistent, as well as some inconsistent sounds. And here's my noise canceling ranking with all the earbuds I tested. Take this with a grain of salt. I'm just going off what I hear. So it's a pretty rough ranking. I plan on redoing this soon with a proper measurement system, but both buds are up there. I'm giving the EA a six out of 10 and the ear a seven out of 10. So I noticed the ear is slightly better at blocking out voices than the E2, but apart from that, it's pretty much the same strength. The EA does let in more mid-range and low frequency noise, but it's still not too bad. You can also customize the strength of the noise canceling on both earbuds or turn on adaptive mode, which will automatically adjust the strength depending on the noise around you, which can save you some battery life. 
You can also use noise cancelling on one earbud whilst the other is in the case. Now let's talk about EQ shift. So that's how your sound quality changes with noise cancelling on compared to noise cancelling off compared to transparency. And this is something I want to point out because the E2 had quite a noticeable amount. So with noise cancelling on, there was about 10% more treble compared to noise cancelling off in transparency mode. With the E, there is the slightest bass increase when you go from noise cancelling on to noise cancelling off or transparency. The EA has a couple percent more bass with noise cancelling on compared to off and transparency, but it's the least EQ shift out of all three. Overall, I'm glad to see this has been improved. Another more behind the scenes improvement is with the automatic wind noise reduction on the noise cancelling and transparency mode. So on the E2, how this would work when the microphones would pick up wind, this will start to turn off your noise cancelling or transparency mode. So you don't hear the wind coming in through the earbuds, but it would normally take about 10 up to 15 seconds for the noise cancelling or transparency to turn back on. So this has been cut in half on the E and EA. So both buds take about five to seven seconds to turn the noise cancelling or transparency back on. Still a lot of earbuds do this a lot faster, like the AirPods, Google Pixel Buds, Bose QC Buds. They usually take up to a couple seconds maximum, but still it's good to see they are trying to improve this. All right, category nine is a transparency mode. And I'm scoring both buds a seven out of 10, the same as the E2. The E and EA do have noticeably less white noise hiss. I rate them about a one out of five, where the E2's white noise was quite obvious, about a three out of five. But the overall clarity of the transparency mode is about the same. If anything, the E2 is a little bit clearer. Both buds still have a decent transparency mode. It's quite natural, but like hearing things in the distance is a little bit muffled. Even talking to someone like in a quiet room, it's just not incredibly clear at picking up voices and hearing your own voice when you speak as well is also a little bit muffled. And you get that automatic wind reduction. So for example, if you're gonna be going for a run outside, the mics are automatically gonna pick up quite a bit of wind noise. So it's automatically gonna turn that transparency mode off and there's no way to turn this auto wind reduction off in the app. And I did notice the EA picks up much less wind through the microphones. It's not as loud where the E as well as the E2 pick up that wind quite easily and you, you just kind of hear it more. So something to keep in mind. All right, onto the final round, sound quality. So let's start with volume here. And in my max volume test, I got around 114 decibels for both earbuds. Same as the E2. So basically you're getting plenty of volume to play around with. Now, when it comes to low level listening, you're not getting a special EQ here to boost bass and trouble at those lower volumes. The Bose QC2 and Ultra and Google Pixel Buds Pro do that the best. So if you tune the earbuds with more bass and trouble, they're naturally gonna sound better at low volumes as well. So the E and EA sound fine at low volumes, but again, depends on how you tune them. But now onto the sound itself, and the E is using higher quality ceramic materials, and the airflow on both buds has been improved by 10%, which they say allows for less distortion and richer overall clarity. So both buds do sound quite different. I'll start with the EA. So the stock tuning you get has pretty boomy bass, nice clear mids, but the treble is a bit lacking. The stock tuning of the E gives you a punchy but full bass response. Excellent mid range where the vocals are forward but natural and a smooth treble response with a bit of sparkle. Basically, it sounds a lot better than the EA. And it's also quite different to the stock tuning of the E2. So the E2 is more on the balance side. So the E compared just has a richer and fuller sound overall. The bass is the main difference. It just has more power and impact to it. And with this, the mids and treble aren't as forward, but you still get the same texture and detail. It's pretty impressive. So those high frequencies, things like orchestration, crashes of a cymbal, hi-hats, the pluck of an acoustic guitar, still has nice sparkle and detail, just like the E2 had. But at the same time with the E, you're getting more impact with the bass. And it's normally a trade-off. Normally when you're increasing that bass, you lose a lot of that detail, but it still retains it very well. The biggest difference I noticed between the two was with kick drums. On the E2, it was a little bit flat and soft sounding, where kick drums on the E just has a lot more impact and punch. Now these differences kind of come down to personal preference. You might like the slightly more flat tuning on the E2. I personally like a bit more of a dynamic sound, and that's exactly what you get on the ear. And this explanation here is before any EQing, but I didn't realize that by default, the bass enhance feature is automatically turned on. So this will dynamically boost the bass in real time, similar to the bass wave slider on the OnePlus Buds Pro 2 and Buds 3. But the OnePlus implementation can get a bit wacky when nothing's bass enhanced is more refined. So now EQing the EA, thankfully they can be saved quite a bit. I just bring that bass down a couple of notches and mainly boost the treble and they sound a lot better. And you can crank that bass enhance all the way to five and these buds rattle, same with the ear as well. If you just wanna push out a powerful loud sound with no distortion at high volumes, you can do it on both earbuds. And on both buds, you can push out a lot more bass than you can on the ear too. 
Now the customization of the ear is the exact same as the ear too. So you get that personalized sound profile. So you run through a hearing test and I definitely recommend using this. It improves the sound quite a bit for me and you can also customize the strength of it. And you can also EQ further with that three band EQ and adjust it even more. And you also have the advanced EQ if you really wanna nail down a specific type of sound. That's gonna be separate to the hearing profile, but like combining all the options here, this is by far the best sound customization out of all the earbuds that I've tested. So I like having my ear set to sound personalization on the middle strength at about 40%. Then I have the bass enhance on three. Like I said, you get heaps of customization, but with all these settings on, take that stock tuning and basically just improve the clarity overall. So with all this, the sound is just powerful. It's dynamic. The sound stage is pretty decent. Instrument separation is solid. It's just a very solid tuning for all types of music. So I'm scoring the ear an 8.5 out of 10. A solid one point improvement over the ear too. And on par with the Sony XM5s, I do prefer the treble response on the XM5s, but the bass and mids are better on the ear. And I'm scoring the EA a 7 out of 10. Once you EQ them, they sound pretty decent. They're just going up against more expensive earbuds. But that wraps up all 10 categories. And before we go into the final score, keep in mind this scoring system, it's quite rough, but it just allows me to compare all the small differences between all the earbuds, making my reviews a bit easier and for you to compare everything as well. So if you want to grab that spreadsheet, it's free to download, link below. And on there, you get notes for each score, specs, a core quality tab, I recently added a terminology tab as well. And to customize the scoring, just fill out a number in the importance column, and that will multiply that entire category, which will then give you a new total score for all the earbuds. But here are the final scores, and the Nothing Ear is in the tied second spot with the AirPods Pro 2, only half a point behind the Technics AZ80. So a solid one and a half point improvement over the Ear 2. And the main improvement was with sound and noise cancelling, which is what I find most important. So is it worth upgrading if you already own the Ear 2? Unless you really want that extra bass, I'd say it's not worth the upgrade. Now the EA finished with a score of 76 and a half. So pretty solid as well, considering their price. But I also added them to my ranking of earbuds under $100 and they actually finished in second spot behind the OnePlus Buds 3. So comparing the two there, overall the OnePlus Buds 3 are the better bud. And I'll link that spreadsheet down below as well. So again, solid work from nothing, pure value for money at the $150 price range. This is the best you can get right now. But if you're looking for some cheaper earbuds, check out my top 10 under $100 scored and ranked video. Quick shout out to my channel members and all my supporters on Ko-Fi. I really appreciate the support. So thanks for tuning in. Stay picky. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.